Hi there, and welcome to Yearly Reviews, a show where I go through all the games that I played through the year of 2020 one week at a time. So without further ado, let's see what we're reviewing this week. Recently, in the past around 15 years or so, we've seen the rise of what people consider to be cinematic games. For those of you who don't know, cinematic games are games which have realistic, for the time, graphics and have a whole lot of cutscenes in them. And you can also find like 5 videos compiling every cutscene and calling it a movie, and they usually do very well. Some examples include The Last of Us, God of War, Until Dawn, Heavy Rain, Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn, and a bunch of others which I can't remember. Today, however, we're not going to review a cinematic game, meaning I've wasted around 30 seconds of your time and I am proud of it. But anyway, let's take a look at a game which seems to be the polar opposite of a cinematic game. In fact, it's more like an arcade game for the modern age, and that game is 88 Heroes. 88 Heroes is about an alien supervillain named Dr. Hate, who decides to one day visit Earth and do bad stuff to it. It's not described in the game, and if it is, I just can't remember. But never to fear, as Earth calls for its mightiest heroes, the best of the best in fact. We ordered the best, but instead they got the rest. Going through Dr. Hate's top secret lair, all 88 heroes are there to stop this alien mastermind once and for all. And those heroes are... And if you didn't hear all of them, too bad, I am not going to repeat myself. If I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to games I play, I mostly play games which looks, or what most people would call, good. But sometimes, I'll pick a game that looks a bit like shit, and others may agree it is shit. And going in, I expected 88 Heroes to be the latter. But I'm pleasantly surprised. 88 Heroes has a lot of charm. Yeah, I will just set this for the past two reviews, but just bear with me. The heroes themselves and the way they play with different playstyles, allowing the player to get used to a certain character at a time, really gives it a unique feel to it. And the game also has a tongue-in-cheek arcade feel to it, and it really excels at being that, with its retro art style and hammy story. If you're looking for something to pass the time, 88 Heroes might be right for you. However, because of this, 88 Heroes certainly isn't going to be extremely challenging or emotional or something worth critiquing on the same lines as serious games like, I don't know, Shadow of the Colossus or something. It's not going to be that influential or something that you consider to be the absolute best of the best. It's meant to be this quick little session that you'd have with friends, a game to pass the time in a sense. I also think that because there's a grand total of 88 Heroes, you'd be hard pressed to name one of them, let alone all of them at once. Unless you're some kind of weird 88 hero super fan who somehow exists. And since the hero order is random, you can also get a ton of heroes that play badly before you get an actual good hero to play, and vice versa. The trouble with talking about 88 heroes is that there's barely anything to talk about without stretching it beyond belief. But it isn't bad, and I do think it's a good, fun game. Like I said, it's just a fun little distraction that isn't meant to be taken seriously. If you want a game worth sticking hours and hours into to achieve every achievement and complete it 100%, you're better off looking somewhere else. Sometimes it might get a bit bland and repetitive to the point where you only remember bits of what you played a few minutes ago. But if you're looking for something to pass the time, pick it up. Plus, there were a few characters that did catch my eye. Like... Oh boy, I wonder what the joke here is going to be. Hey, you. Who? Me? Yeah, of course, who else would it be, dummy? Are you doing anything on August the 9th, Monday, 2021? Oh, yeah, I gotta see relatives Shut up. there. Okay. Cancel those plans because I'm about to tell you what you're actually going to be doing on that day. And what will that be? Well, how about you listen for a second, you dumb fuck? On the 9th of August, I'll be doing a charity stream where I play 12 hours and 12 games, playing a different game each hour. Now, what are those games, may I ask? Well, they are. Fury, Shadow of the Colossus, Ace Attorney, Beholder 2, Mechanica, Bioshock, Shovel Knight, Bloodborne, Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Doom, and What Remains of Edith Finch. And as this is a charity stream, donations are always appreciated. However, donating will be a bit different, not just because I want to be unique, but because I don't know how donating on Twitch works. So, instead of donating to me up front, there's a GoFundMe, where you can provide money there, and I don't know how GoFundMe works, but yeah, if you want more information, there's a link to the GoFundMe provided on screen, and hope you visit it.
So yeah, if you're interested, go on to one for all 12 at Twitch. I'll be streaming at 9am CST to 9pm on CST. Donate to the GoFundMe so that way the money can actually go to the charity. And hope to see you then. Okay, that was weird. I mean, I was expecting something like a, a I don't know, a rickroll? I mean, it's right there. Oh, for fuck's sake! Hey folks, thanks for sticking to the end of this review. If you like what you saw here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys making comments on these videos. They make up my day and I read every single one of them. If you like what you saw here, feel free to look at the newest review and look at the latest review. And if you want to watch more, feel free to hit that bell so you know when a new review drops. See ya and thanks for watching.